everyone, Maddie here from dclblogger.com. Let's do today, today's review. It's a Tuesday for me, but I think it's still a Monday for the rest of the world. So, or maybe it's Tuesday morning, actually. It's Tuesday midday for me. But whatever it is, this is the first one for this week. So let's get into it. Pretty big news here. Axie Infinity dropped their Axis token, so their ERC20 AXS token that's going to be listed on Binance Launchpad. And um, I know the Axie Infinity team, I know the community, I know that they've been working pretty hard for the last two, three years with the game out on mobile phone, on desktop, um, I think it's on iPad as well. So it works on like, you know, Mac and Windows and pretty much just have a game out there that's accessible and playable by many people. They've been fine tuning the game that it, to, to make sure that it's pretty addictive and a lot of people play the tournaments that, um, you know, it's quite often. So an access, a, a governance token for them kind of makes sense now because a lot of NFT projects seem to have an ERC20 token. It's a good way to kind of incentivize um, the community members and incentivize activity, um, things like staking, etc. So they launched this and they kind of had a stream. They worked with Delphi Digital to do the tokenomics of the um, token. So let's kind of quickly go through some of the stuff. Um, Axie Infinity Shards, e AXS, pronounced Axis, I believe, is an ERC20 governance token for the Axie Infinity universe. Holders will shape the future of Axie by signaling their support for governance pro proposals and directly and directing usage of the community treasury. Axis will also be money within Lunasia and may allow holders to access certain sales and events. So basically, yes, it's going to be the, the usual, um, you know, governing the direction of proposals, but it's also going to be things like, you know, uh, directing where the funds are going to go uh, for the treasury and also be the in-game currency in Lunacia. Lunacia being the game, the, the world that Axie is anticipating release of. So that looks like this. Looks like this. It's pretty damn cool. You can buy plots of land similar to where you can in like usual virtual worlds and um, you know that you're going to be able to build all kinds of stuff here. So it, I mean, it's, I have to say it's, it's one of the most polished games I've ever seen on blockchain. So they've been putting a lot of work into this. So it is exciting to see what's going to come out of this ERC20 token. Um, deep being uh, a little bit of a deep dive into the token of metrics. It looks like it's going to be a 10 cent public sale price, um, 270 million total supply. So 10 cents, that's a diluted market cap of about 30 million, I believe, USD. Um, 60 million supply at public sales. So the, there's going to be 11%, I believe, that's going to go towards the public sale. So that including whatever's um, supplied, I think, via airdrops as well. So if you are, uh, where is it? Maybe I don't have it up. But if you are, oh, it doesn't, I don't have it up. But basically, if you are a person that's been playing the game for a while, maybe you've engaged in the, the marketplace for a bit, you bought and sold some axes, you bred some axes, you bought some land, you've, uh, you know, you're, you're part of the community in some way and on-chain can be proved, they're going to be airdropping some tokens to those people as well. So that including um, the public sale, I believe it seems like that on, uh, you know, when they launch on, uh, on uh, the Binance launchpad, they're going to have about 60 million um supply out there so that's going to be a market cap of what six million usd i think that's i think that's tiny i think that's tiny for a project of this caliber because it's it, like i said it's quite established and um you know if you scroll down look at the partners that they have ubisoft um i believe they're an investor they've got hdc make a dow samsung binance i mean you know they've they've put in the hard yards for a while now so I'm not going to say, um, you know, nothing can vouch for the future of the game and the token price. But in terms of the gameplay, there's a lot of people that are hungry for their, their assets. We've had the record sale of six of their Genesis land parcels sold for 415 Ethereum, about 165,000 USD. They've had some massive sales. And so, uh, you know, it looks pretty good so far. I think whoever's going to get through to being able to participate on the token sale is going to do really well. So token sale price looks like it's 8 cents here. So... I'm not sure exactly what's right. Maybe I've got something wrong here. Private sale allocation, yeah, 10.8 million access. That's going to be able to be bought during the private sale. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens here because, like I said, you know, they have a pretty established game. They have thousands of people that play this game. And, uh, you know, price is a bit of speculation, but it's also very highly, I mean, having being in the crypto space, price action is speculative. But, uh, you know, this is one of the first projects coming out of the NFT space where it is demand 
where the prices are coming from demand, where items are selling because people want them to play the game, um, etc. Um, this is a very deep dive into this. I liked it. I watched a bit of it, but you know, nice and short at 12.5 minutes. We have, uh, I believe his name is Kegi. So check out his stuff. It seems like he does some pretty cool stuff on the blockchain space. So shout out to him. Um, Devil.eth. I've seen him around the metaverses, predominantly crypto voxels mentioned that a long-standing crypto kid is community member just got hacked by a Uniswap link and her most valuable NFTs were stolen. Very sad. Um, very very sad you know like uh you know clicking on links these days is very risky especially if you're seeing them in discord you know think 10 20 30 times before you do that usually if i there's a link and i'm on desktop i go through it on my burner mobile phone just in case i mean i don't know what's going to happen right someone sends me a link that could be trusted but maybe they're sending me a phishing link without knowing um but the most important thing here i think what happened was that the user um Enter their pass keys, which you should never do. That's the golden rule of crypto and security. You never, ever, ever put your pass keys, whether they be numbers or the passphrase, to get inside your wallet on anything unless you're 110, 50%, 1000% sure that that's only used to access your MetaMask digital wallet. And even then, like if I were to download MetaMask, usually what I do is I go to their Twitter account and I click the link there. I, I barely ever Google any of this stuff. I like, you know, I make sure a hundred times that I'm doing the right thing because it's it's hard, right? You're, you're kind of managing your own security. With decentralization comes complete management of your own assets, your own rights, your own risks as well as the beautiful things that come out of decentralization. But managing your own risks is quite difficult and uh, you know it, managing your own uh, security i mean sorry it comes with a lot of risks if you like i said if someone else gets access to your passphrase they don't have to be on your computer they can be in some computer all the way in like you know um i don't know india or china or philippines or america or uk or any of these countries that you're not located in and they download metamask they put in your passphrase and bang they have the access to all of your assets exactly like you do your cryptocurrency your ethereum whatever you have in your wallet your nfts everything so be be yeah, double triple up on that security and, and learn about that stuff people have hard wallets people have paper wallets where they use these wallets and they, they barely ever if ever connect like the passphrase is never um has never hit the screen before like it's all been written down on paper and it exists on paper so there's like People go to uh, extraordinary, extraordinary and necessary lengths to protect that passphrase. Uh, reasonably, a reasonably good account too at that, nearly 50 ETH at floor valuation. So Nate Alex, I know he's pretty into the crypto uh, kitties and, and crypto punks life. So I would say it's a pretty conservative estimate. 50 ETH is no small change. That's like 20,000 USD. It's quite sad. Hopefully they recover some of that somehow. Or someone sends up some money. Um, looks like Devil's doing an auction for this. Um, super rare are, um, they have a collab over here with about 12 or so artists I counted and a piece here called Gen Z, um, that's being sold. That's a connected collab of about, you know, 12 artists in the space. I feel it's quite iconic. I might bid for this one, although it's quite difficult for me to, cause I'm so damn deep in the NFT life. You guys would fall off your chair if you find out how much NFTs I how much I spent on NFT it's crazy so at this stage like I need to uh, you know really dig into my personal fund that I've kept aside for my personal use or my other investments out of crypto to jump into this but we're such a like a, a pioneering um, revolutionary part of the digital age it's difficult to pass these opportunities up I feel this piece will go for a bit um, you know 12 of the most promising Gen Z artists that already have some very strong careers before they hit NFTs. Um, they have some social followings. They're all kind of in the same similar circle. They support each other. Um, their art is growing at an exceptional rate without NFTs. And NFTs are allowing them to do things like this, collaborate and sell their work. And, uh, you know, monetize their creations, learn and grow with the space, learn what Ethereum can do for them, etc. So exciting for me to see this happen. Um, couple of these artists had their art um, displayed in Shanghai. So we got here 18 Kraus. Sorry, man, I hope I'm saying that right. Jonathan Wolf, 
some of his art as well and some of this stuff like it's you know these guys have these guys are not small artists they've been around for a while even though they may be young but they've been doing art probably since the age of 10 and now are at the perfect age or crossroads to make the most out of this my investment thesis for the the art world is to invest and collect gen z and young artists because i really feel they're going to pioneer this space moving forward they're going to like take this beyond what we can imagine i'm like 30 at the moment there's no way i can keep up with gen z when they start developing websites tools blockchain games etc i feel like the next 10 20 years is their decades right so investing in their early pieces for me is crucial that's why i'm kind of trying to hunt out and see who's gonna who's like taking their career and art seriously i'm very proud to own some of these art pieces i own some ferocious pieces digital and physical must pin uh, pieces digital and physical jonathan wolf i don't have yet i really need some of these pieces femzer i don't have eating crowns i passed on like an idiot i feel like i should have bought some of the other pieces so you know so very very promising artists coming out of here um Anyway, so Super Air are also doing a Gen Z exhibition in Decentraland in their build in Decentraland. And it's great to see people and communities using Decentraland as a platform to, to do something more than just Twitter, right? It's a way to um, have community discussion and build something more than what's available at the moment. So I might be moderating this at some stage. I think um, I'm working, I'm talking to someone who um, I think it, it will go ahead. So whether it be during the event or after the event, I will be moderating some sort of a panel and talking about Gen Z and art and like what's exciting and everything cool about this space. So we'll be hearing from these artists. Uh, another really, really cool and exciting piece is a this. Where are we? Um, this collaboration by um, Coldy and Hackatow, pretty damn big names, very, very big names. So I th it looks like these collaborations are, are, are becoming more frequent. And I feel collaborations are quite important because it's rare that artists would come together and make a piece, right? It's more common that they would make pieces from their own self. So it's probably like 50 to 100 Coldy pieces that he's made being in the industry for a while. I'll have to double check that. But um, there's probably, this is probably the first, if ever, that I know of uh, collaboration between Hakatao and Coldy. So there would be rare... It'd be rare, so it'd be interesting to see what kind of a price this fetch is in terms of comparative to, uh, you know, the previous pieces, um, the individual pieces. I know Jose Delbo, obviously, and him and Trevor Jones hit 111,000 USD, which was almost double these, almost double the previous records of both of them. Um, let's take a look at this. At the time, Cody tweeted this. It looked like the current bid was 25 Ethereum. Let's kind of jump into this. Uh, yeah, 25 Ethereum is sitting at and i wouldn't be surprised i mean um yeah i i don't think this will last that long at 25 ethereum and that's about it in terms of the updates i am going to be doing a deep dive into one or a few of these upcoming projects you can see that um this kind of looks like pokemon pretty much Skull chain monsters they're currently on kickstarter i believe running a campaign and they've uh, raised more than I think five to 10 X their initial goal. So um, I don't know if they're new or if they've been around for a while. It looks like they've put a lot of development into this and they really want to build it into a universe. You can see like different people here. And you know, as we get more uh, established projects coming out and learning what mechanics work well for blockchain games, etc., we should see a healthy group of blockchain games that can be played in a, in a hopefully a very strong economy within these games. Uh, Terra Virtua is something that has been on my radar for a while. I just haven't had the space to kind of check it out. But it's 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 interesting because I believe you can get like three D video, three uh, D um, three D uh, like avatar type things, and then you can put them in these virtual spaces, three D virtual galleries, um, which I've seen. But uh, let me see if I can pop one up. I don't think I can. But I've seen like their virtual galleries very fluid and um, very well built. But I think they're working with the Godfather collection. That's pretty damn cool. So they've got some IPs and licenses to do some cool stuff with um, some partnered projects. So again, I'll do a deep dive into this later on. Blanco as well. I've mentioned this before, but you know these guys have been around for a while. Um, <laughs> I've seen the pre-sale and them, you know, coming out with something some plans a long time now like maybe two years plus well, but, you can create your own. uh 
Would be the same. Where you are in charge, where you can make your very own Looks like games with like these avatars. This reminds me of that game that's out at the moment. I forgot the name, where it's like you can be like creatures like this and run around and play games. Okay. So I wonder if that means that they're just digital toys or if there's a digi physical component here where you can own the physical toys and that comes with maybe the things you earn in buying blank that are yours to own. Learn more about that. Yeah, it'll be interesting because if these are like. If these kind of hit, you know, stores and they're in like all your Walmart, etc., and you can buy these in physical, and then you can scan them up and then buy them, and, and then use them in digital games, that would really open up the whole digi physical connection. Because suddenly the demand in collecting these in the physical world is also there because in the digital world there's some gameplay demand. Well, damn, that that'll be pretty sick if that happens. A very very big, maybe this is 2022 thing. Who knows? All right, well, that's it. I uh, didn't want to go too long with this. Hopefully I covered some stuff and tomorrow we'll go through some more.